While this is all in pieces, I may as well uh, take the wheel off, change the tyre, change the suspension because I've got my air shocks I've got to fit. Uh, so I think I'll do that first actually. And see with these, these shock absorbers, the, the eyelet or whatever you call it is too small. They will not go on. So with tires, you need special tools. These. Uh, what you have to do is. Let as much air out as you possibly can, and then when you've let the air out, you'll probably notice you see this moves inside there. So you've got uh, what do they call that? The well, or whatever they call I don't know. If you squeeze the tyre there as much as you can, and then you move it like that, you can see that's off centre now. And then what you do is you get your screwdriver on the opposite side, obviously protecting the rim like I'm not doing, and then you pull it like that. And then you get your next screwdriver in. And then you pull it like that. Although you're supposed to go the other way because you can't get the bloody tube out. Dickhead. But that's short, it might come off by hand now, as long as you don't trap the tube in. So here's my new tyre. There's the tread difference, look. It should be a lot quieter on the roads. So that'll be the direction as the rotation thing so you need to make sure it's the right way so with that uh, it's that way so that's that way so the drum has to be that way so it's like that I'm gonna have to I'll go clean all this flashing up they left all the rubber flashing up on here which doesn't look very good to me it's not really a sign of quality, is it, when they leave all that on there? I'll get my old friend out, the talcum powder. Usually what I do is put the tube in first, and I'm wondering if that's the best option. It probably is. So if you put the tube in, you might need to inflate it a bit to get it in properly. <laughs> Why is there always double entendres for everything? Right, if we get a bit more talc. And just put it round the bead. It's just to help it on a bit, that's all. So you get the valve. First thing to do, obviously, is put the valve in. And then get that side of the tyre, or the rim. And then just push it. And it should, without too much trouble, although these tyres seem to be a smaller diameter. There you go. So that goes in there perfectly and then pull that, make sure that that's not, not pinched anywhere. And then go around the other side and make sure that the tube's in, in the rim itself rather than, than sitting out in the tyre. And then you get the valve side, although it doesn't really matter at this point which side you do. I always do the valve side first. It's just, it so is when I lever on this side, it doesn't, it, it doesn't catch the valve. So I put the valve side in first, and then you push down as much as you possibly can. 
So it is very easy to change a tyre. Most of the time anyway, unless it's an M365 and then you've got no bloody chance. When it's half inflated, I don't know if you can see, but you, there's a line on the tyre there, which is the usual part that it, has to, it needs to sit on the bead. Uh, just make sure that, that is all visible all the way around and then you know it's actually seated properly because otherwise it goes off centre, you know, like my back one's gone. Again, the same as the back one, I put 40 psi in just to make damn sure that it holds. Now, this is the point where taking photos comes in handy. Don't know if you can see it. Uh, as I suspected, the bolt, I don't know if it is bent. I've got to come up with a, a, a solution to put something across here to reinforce it. I don't know what yet or how. Um, ideally I could do with a plate. What I might do with this is cut a triangular piece of aluminium and fit it on there as, as reinforcement but I don't know if it's going to help because the torsional point is going that way. I, I don't know what to do with it yet. I had to shim this uh, disc out which I don't know if you can actually see. I had to shim it out with washers just to make damn sure the space that I need is the correct one. So I've got these shims that I need to put behind that disc. I just hope I've got the right size. <laughs> it's not very easy taking this thing apart when it's upright like this um, because I have to lift it and it hurts. But anyway, it's got to be done. So I've got to take those washers out there that you can probably see, I hope you can, you probably can't because it's all blurred. But I've got to take those out and put a shim in. I've got the rear brake, that's the front. I've got the rear brake fitted and working. It's perfect, it's actually really, really good. It's, oh shit, it still needs a bit of bleeding. Um, but it's fine, the clearance between the banjo fitting and the tyre is quite close, but it'll clear, it's fine. I'm waiting for some ties of some kind. Um, I've ordered some things that I can make this, pull this out just a bit, just to make sure that it doesn't go into there, just to secure it properly. And the same for the phase wires on the other side. Now, I've got to start the wiring. It don't look very pretty. I've got another throttle uh, and brake and everything else coming in, which should satisfy MSVA requirements as well. Uh, it's in the folded position at the minute purely because I need to make sure that all the wiring will go into the folded position. These bolts are missing because I'm waiting for some new ones to come in. These are made of cheese, I think. So. I've got to start the wiring. I want to use the existing headlight, uh, but I don't know if that's 12 volts or 9 volts or 6 volts or 1 volt. I ain't got a clue yet. I've got to test that by applying a few volts and then seeing exactly where it uh, lights up properly. So I've got that. I've got all these that I've got to wire. But like I say, I'm not using this throttle. This is only here for a test just to make sure everything works. So I'm going to start with, I don't know, I'm going to start with the on off switch. Now the on off switch which is there, which is there, I am going to use that. Uh, it seems a waste not to. These cut out switches for the motor, I'm going to be using those. These are carbon fibre handlebars now, they're a hell of a lot lighter and the same strength and I still need to do something with this, it's just temporary. Uh, and also, 
these are the LEDs for the Kelly controller. Uh, obviously one red, one green, just to, so as I can visually see them outside. And in there is the original charge port, which I'm going to be using. Uh, I've still got to seal all this up, it's only loosely put in just to make sure everything works properly. But that's that done. So I'm going to start on this rat's nest now. While I'm down on the floor, well I'm not, I'm sitting on the scooter platform. Uh, I've been asked a question of how you adjust the steering. Now I'm going to advise you, don't. Leave it as it is. It's tight on these things but please don't bother adjusting it. First thing you do is this thing here. Uh, you take the three bolts out. This goes around the stem here. So you take these three bolts out and then you get a, a, a screwdriver or something and you twist it in there to relieve the pressure and then you either, you can't do it on mine because of the wires that are going in here, you either pull it up or push it down whichever one, you just relieve the pressure on that because that clamps around here and it squeezes it in. Now when you've done that, this is extremely tight, this stem. Mine isn't because I've had to file it. Now when you get it off, like that, you've then got that bolt. So you undo that bolt and then you've got this one here. Now this you have to heat up. Uh, because of the thread lock they put in, which there is a shitload of, you've got to heat it up. Whilst you're heating it up, obviously you have to undo it. So you undo it a bit, not too much, just a bit. A couple of turns will do you. This piece here, this piece of plastic, there's two things that hold it in. Two bolts, Allen bolts, you undo those, you pull that off. On the front of the headlight there's a screw that goes in there, you undo that and you lever the headlight forwards or you can go the long way around, take the mod guard off and take everything off underneath it. I'll just lever it forwards. So, on the front here as well there's a screw. So you undo the screw. Now when you remove the screw there's the screw. When you've undone that, that makes this thing loose, which is restricting this thing from turning. So then you get your grips on it. When that comes off, like that, you'll see there's going to be a shitload of thread lock and God knows what in there. Now when that comes off, you can then, you have to push that forward. I've got to do this with one hand, so and then you lift that out. Then you've got a lock nut and the bottom one is the adjuster. Now when you've undone that, which is thread locked as well, you can't heat it up because there's, a, there's a, a dust protector there. So you just have to persevere with it. So what I did, I took all the bearings out and I cleaned them all up and I put them back in and I adjusted it so as there was no play on it. Then I put it all back together, put the, the stem on, and there was loads of play in it. So I had to take it apart again while it was on the ground and I got pressure on it, absolutely everything, wiggled it all round, moved it as much as I could, and then I had to readjust it. And now it's exactly the same as when it came out of the factory. So I advise do not adjust it unless you really do need to. Now if you notice there's any grunching, that's because they haven't cleaned the powder coat off the cups. Uh, obviously there's no powder coat on the bearings, but the cups themselves that the bearings sit in, they haven't cleaned it off. And the grunching you can feel is the powder coat going around the bearings. So if you want to take it apart and clean it, mine is now smooth, but it's bloody tight. It's, it's not as tight as it was, but it is still tight. I've routed all the wires from the controller these are going to actually sit behind a panel uh, which is going to be waterproofed so there's going to be nothing that goes in there. Now they go up here behind the folding mechanism and they come up through here and there's a hole that I've drilled in there and then it comes out there and then it goes up here and then it comes out here and these are all the wires that I've got. Uh, these are all going to the controller for the various, uh, the brake, the regen, the everything else. 
Uh, one of these is for the buzzer, the other one is for the on-off switch and this is just uh, for 12 volts. Now I'm not happy with that because it comes out there, it goes in there, blah blah blah. I want it to come out here, right here, because it's got to. I've got no choice, it's got to come out here purely because of this turning like that. Now I want it to go through this hole here, which I'm going to have to elongate a bit just to get all this braiding through it, or wire wrap or whatever. And the cables I'm going to keep going up this tube here. So I've got to take it all apart again and sort this hole out and make it so as the cables go through there. And then they'll come up here and I'm going to drill a hole of some kind up the side here and at the same time I'm going to, I'm going to sort this clamp out. Um, I think with this what I'm going to do is drill straight through and put a nut and a bolt on it rather than having this threaded thing, thing through aluminium. So it's all got to come apart again. <laughs> 